The title of the film is extreme. The film begins with a man named Maximo calling his son Ander to see if he is ready to leave Barcelona. Maximo arrives at a Colombian drug manufacturing plant after finishing work, and his brother Lucero enters the factory while asking Maximo and his friend Rafa to wait in the car, while Lucero meets the factory's owner, Romeo, to pay him a sum of money. In exchange for Lucero's father's support because he intends to run for the leadership of European criminal organizations, Romeo's condition was that his son be appointed as a high-ranking official. In the meantime, Lucero's father is on his way. Lucero's sister Marita will accompany him to the elections, which begin in half an hour. Romeo was taken aback when, instead of money, he opened the bag and discovered his son's head. Fire was exchanged between Lucero's men and Romeo. After killing some of Romeo's men, Lucero instructed Rafa to contact his father and inform him that Romeo had fled and that the elections were a ruse. Lucero then orders Maximo to execute everyone, Romeo's men, as well as the factory workers. Maximo didn't agree with Lucero's approach, especially when it came to the unarmed factory workers, but he was devoted to his family and to Lucero's father, whom he regarded as his biological son. After learning that his father will arrive at the factory soon, Lucero's father arrives and is furious at what he has done, despite the fact that he had sent Lucero to Japan in the past to learn the meaning of loyalty and self-respect. Instead, he discovered the Yakuza's brutality and returned to Barcelona. During their conversation, Lucero orders a hitman named Cholmu to kill his father's bodyguards, including Maria. When Maria realized she had to flee before they killed her, Lucero pointed a gun at his father and demanded that he kill him because he wanted to take his place. Before killing him, he told him how much he despised him because he preferred Maria and Maximo to him, despite the fact that he was his biological son. He asked his father whether he preferred a head or heart shot. Lucero fulfilled his father's request by answering the head. Then Cholmu informs him that Maria has escaped. We see Maximo, who arrived at his home, hugged his son, and then handed the key to the nanny, who gave the key to a mysterious man in exchange for money without Maximo's knowledge. Ander was playing his guitar when he noticed someone in his house. Maximo tells Ander to go into hiding. A group of people soon attacked Maximo's house. Maximo manages to fight them off on his own at first. When a man named Finito enters, he shoots Maximo from behind, before killing Ander in front of his father's eyes. Finito ran outside after what had happened and told Lucero what he had done. It turns out that Lucero is the one who ordered Maximo and his son's murder. Finito blows up Maximo's house to cover his tracks before fleeing. We see a young man named Leo getting close to his girlfriend Daniela two years later. Leo was a drug dealer on his college campus. When Leo and Daniela pass by an abandoned garage and hear loud music, they decide to go inside. They observe Maximo, who was still alive and training his body in martial arts. That night, Leo returned home and gave his mother, who was unaware of his work, the money he earned from selling drugs. He also bought his brother a present for his birthday. Soon after, Lee received a phone call from the supplier, a man named Jero, who turned out to be a Lucero employee. The man approached Leo and asked him to sell drugs in gangster territory in Russia, but Leo refused because he would be killed if he did. But Jero made Leo do it, and he had no choice. Leo sells several packages of heroin images before being apprehended by Russians, who beat him up in a deserted alley warned him not to sell in their area, and threatened to kill him. At the same time, Maximo was passing through the alley, so he attempted to assist Leo by beating up the Russians before fleeing. Leo manages to track Maximo down to the old garage where he used to live. Leo expresses gratitude to Maximo for his assistance. Leo asked Maximo if he could play the guitar while he was tending to his wound. He informs him that the guitar belonged to his murdered son Ander and that he is unable to play it. He remembered what happened to him in front of his eyes after talking about his son, and he has been determined to exact revenge on Lucero ever since. But Lucero has vanished, and no one knows where he is. The following day, Leo requests that Maximo teach him how to defend himself in exchange for him, teaching him how to play the guitar. Maximo granted his request. He began by teaching him the fundamentals of fighting, and before leaving, Leo wrote down his phone number so that Maximo could call him and ask him to bid him farewell in the manner of his late son Ander. Lucero is gambling with his business partners, 
and later informs Rafa that he plans to return to Barcelona to lead the Mafia, which is led by Dmitri, the Russian mobster. Jero calls Leo while he is on campus and asks him to return to the Russian area to sell drugs. But Leo refuses and hangs up the phone. Despite this, Leo goes to the Russian area that night while Jero and his men are also gone. When Leo saw Jero, he ran away, but in vain because Jero caught him and beat him badly, breaking his hand. After discovering that Leo had stolen money from him, Maximo was surprised to find Daniela standing in front of the garage door looking for Leo the next day. She informs him that Leo stole the money he earned from drug dealing and that Jero may be responsible for his disappearance. Maximo sent Leo a message asking him to meet him, and when they met in the church, he told him everything. Maximo asks Maria to assist Leo, but she instead reminds him of their plan and the upcoming Mafia boss elections. Jero and his men go to a Russian gang's nightclub in the evening. Maximo was following Jero in order to avenge Leo. Maximo easily defeated Jero, and when his men offered to assist him, one of them recognized Maximo and fled. Maximo defeats all of Jero's men and breaks his hand in the same way that he broke Leo's. He then goes to Maria's house to check on Leo's health and to teach Maria martial arts elsewhere. Finito went to Jero's house and mocked him about what had happened to him. Jero informs Finito that the attacker's name is Gladiator. Finito realizes upon hearing that name that the man who hit Jero is Maximo, who is still alive. Jero is assassinated by Finito. He inquired of his men as to the whereabouts of Maximo and Leo. Meanwhile, Leo has recovered and decides to return home. Ignoring Maria and Maximo's warnings, Maximo took Leo to his home to ensure his safety. Leo, on the other hand, was astounded to learn that his younger brother, along with his mother and grandfather, had died. Finito was already present when they were about to execute Leo, but Maximo rushed in and saved him. Maximo engages in a fierce battle with Finito and his men, but Finito escapes. While Maria tends to Maximo's wounds, Maximo drives Leo back to Maria's house. He informs her that Finito is aware that he is still alive, infuriating Maria because their revenge plan may fail. I went to Leo, who was crying and blaming himself for his family's death. Maria attempted to calm him down. But Leo appears to be so distraught that he decided to lock himself in his room. Maximo returns to his garage and Maria calls him to warn him about Finito. Maximo prepared to face Finito's men and, with his fighting skills, easily defeated Finito's men. Then Maria tells him about a man named Urwiza, who is in a nightclub and is in charge of organizing Lucero's money laundering activities. Maximo went to the club, but he couldn't get in because it was closed. Maxine is unconcerned and slaughters the guards and Urquez's men one by one. Maria informs Maximo that the funds will be delivered to Lucero before the election and that the truck carrying the funds will arrive in 20 minutes. Urquiza attempted to flee while Maximo was fighting off his men, but Maximo caught up with him and beat him. He then texted Lucero from Urquiza's phone before taking all of the money and fleeing. Rafa then went to Urquiza and looked shocked when he saw what had happened in the club. Urquiza told him everything, including the letter and phone he had given him. Meanwhile, Maria was attempting to remove the bullet from Maximo's body after he had been injured in the club. Maximo, on the other hand, refused to have the operation because Lucero was on his way, and he wanted to kill him as soon as he arrived. Concerned about Maximo's condition, Leo administers an anesthetic to him, so Maria can remove the bullet. Lucero arrives in Barcelona and asks Rafa to take him to meet Urquiza because he did not receive the information he desired. Urquiza is brutally murdered. Leo, on the other hand, took Maria's gun while she was sleeping and walked out after discovering her quiz's location via tracking devices. When he'd arrived, he pointed the gun at two men who were about to dispose of Urquiza's body. Finito suddenly walks in on them and hits Leo hard. Chulmu was taken aback when Leo said Maximo would save him. When Finito is about to kill Leo, Maria drives by and hits him before transporting him to the hospital. She tried to call Maximo on the way, but he didn't answer because he was unconscious. Unknowingly, one of Veneto's men follows Maria to the hospital and informs Finito of her whereabouts. When the Russian discovers Maximo is still alive, he orders Finito to execute him immediately. Cholmu, on the other hand, entered Maria's house and was greeted by Maximo, who had finally awoken. Chulmu told Maximo 
that he wanted him to take over as leader and succeed his father. Because he had left the criminal underworld and begun a new life with his son, he made the decision to devote himself entirely to Lucero. The two then got into a fight and Maximo asked Chomu where Lucero was. But Maximo stabbed Chomu to death because he said something that enraged him. He then went to Lucero after checking on Leo in the hospital. When Rafa learns of Maximov's arrival, he informs Lucero. Maximo slaughtered Lucero's men one by one, and when he met Rafa, he assisted him in killing Lucero. However, one of Lucero's men suddenly throws a grenade. The explosion took Rafa's life. Maximo eventually meets Lucero, who informs him that he did all of this because their father loved him and Maria more than him. When Maximo was about to kill his brother, Finito, who was holding Maria hostage, appears and distracts Maximo, who is defeated by Lucero. Maria attempted to hit Finito, but collapsed and passed out. Lucero directed Finito to murder Maximo, while he was about to murder Maria. Maximo suddenly stood up and killed Finito with a single blow. Maria then awakens and attacks Lucero. Maximo also attacked him. He killed Lucero with a stab in the heart and a shot to the head. They go to get Leo out of the hospital and take Lucero's money after they get rid of him. The film comes to an end here. That was our recap of the action-packed movie, Extremo, where a retired hitman, his sister and a troubled teen come together for a mission of revenge. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did recapping it for you. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and want to see more movie recaps just like this. And if you're new to my channel, Benjamin Recaps, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. I'm always on the lookout for the latest and greatest movies to recap, so if you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.